Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free reco- drug recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We are your go-to common sense nutritional source. For all things health and nutrition, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. This is the program where we explain to you how the body works. We explain to you how the biochemistry works. We explain to you why nutritional supplements are so important. This is not just a show where I just tell you what to do. And if you're listening to this program, you're not the kind of person that wants to just be told what to do. This is a program for folks who want to understand how this whole thing is put together, how this whole thing works. And if you have questions about any of it, we are here for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And... Of course, if you're interested in checking out our truth treatment products, if you're not satisfied with your skincare as it is, or you know you can get better, or you don't want to pay for water and filler and wax and emulsifier, 90 90 to 95 to 98, even up to 99% of a product that you're using for anti-aging, for wrinkles, for moisturizing, is nothing but filler and wax and preservative and perfume and silicon and oil and emulsifier and surfactant and water and nothing your skin can use, nothing your skin wants, ingredients that your skin has to detoxify. I sometimes wonder about preservatives and toxicity. We don't think anything of rubbing in parabens and formaldehyde formers and imid azolidinyl urea and diazolidinyl urea and iodobutanyl carbamate and all these nasty preservatives that I used to wear a mask when I had to work with. We don't think anything of rubbing them into our skin once or twice or three or four times a day. We rub them into our hair. We rub them into our face. Now, I know that you're only using 0.01% or 0.1%. I understand this. But still, do you really want to rub that stuff on your skin every day? Can there, is it possible that there is no impact on an already toxed out body? If you're interested in preservative-free products that are only active and functional, that are only made with active and functional ingredients, you want to know about our truth treatment products. In fact, that's all you should be using. That's all I use. That's all my friends use. If they're good friends. I've been styling my friends with this, these kinds of products, with truth treatment type products for 30 years. And now they're available to you at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Retinol 5% gel, truth serum, truth bomb, truth omega-6 healing cream. Okay, we are talking about the connective tissue, which is, and I know we've been talking about it for a while, but everything involves the connective tissue. It's hard not to talk about the connective tissue if you're really going to talk about health. The connective tissue is an organ, like the liver or the lungs. We don't call it an organ, but you can think of it like an organ, but it's a very unique organ. Yes, it's like the liver or the lungs or the heart, but 
it's an organ that connects and co that contacts and connects all the other organs. In fact, the connective tissue is an organ that connects all the other everything to each other in the body, including each one of the 100 trillion cells. It is the bread of the raisin bread. The connective tissue is the bread of the raisin bread, and it connects everything into a whole, the way bread connects raisins into a whole unit. And on top of all of that, as if that wasn't amazing enough, the connective tissue has this liquid crystal cons consistency. This is unbelievable. A liquid crystal is like a cross between a solid and a liquid. It's a, it's a solid that flows, or a liquid with solidity. But even more f amazing, phenomenally, not only is a liquid crystal a solid that is a liquid, or a cross between a solid and a liquid, or a combination of a solid and a liquid, but it's also a crystal, which means it has this uniformity and, and tightly regulated organization and structure that can be tweaked just a tiny little bit. And when that tweak to that crystalline structure takes place, the connected tissue becomes an information storage device. By having little tweaks in different places, that can be interpreted as information. This is why the connective tissue stores information. By tweaking the little crystals, each little tweak represents a piece of information. It takes a different shape. The crystalline, uniform crystalline structure, which is just organization, just uniformity, now has a little kink in it, now has a little bend in it, now has a little twist in it. And that little kink or bend or twist is a piece of data. It's a piece of information. So this connective tissue, which is connects everything, is liquid and crystal, liquid crystal, and an information storage device is a brain. It's a computer. It's like one big biological computer chip. How friggin' amazing is that? And now, do you think that building your connective tissue is going to be important? Do you think that breakdowns in connective tissue are going to have an impact on the body? You bet they will. You better believe they will. And it could, because the heart and the circulatory system, like all the other systems, is largely, in many ways, a connective tissue structure, at least from a framework standpoint from a, a scaffolding standpoint, it should be no surprise that the leading cause of death in this country and around the world is a connective tissue problem called heart disease. Yes, heart disease is mostly a connective tissue problem. And it's not just heart disease. Because once you have heart disease, you got other things. If you have heart disease, you're at higher risk for, for aging. If you have heart, heart disease, you're at higher risk for brain problems. If you have heart disease, you're at higher risk for organ failure. If you have heart disease, you're at risk for more connective tissue disease, which can lead to more heart disease, which puts you on this vicious downward spiral. This is so important. And I know we've been talking about it for a while, but we will because it's so important. Heart disease is a joint, it's like, heart, it's like arthritis of the heart. Cardiomyopathy is arthritis of the heart, just like dementia is arthritis of the brain. Just like IBS and ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are arthritis of the intestine. Arthritis is the quintessential, the most well-recognized connective tissue disease, because not everyone, but a lot of folks realize that cartilage is connective tissue. So when we have arthritis, it's understandable and it's easy for us to, to, to make sense of uh, uh, that it's a connective tissue problem. But nobody tells us that Alzheimer's dementia is a connective tissue problem, as is Parkinson's dementia. Nobody tells us that Crohn's disease is a connective tissue problem. So all of these things are like arthritis. They're forms of arthritis. And once we understand this concept, that all disease is the same thing, that all disease has the same underlying health challenges beneath it. That is degeneration of the connective tissue followed by inflammation, followed by fibrosis and hardening, followed by dysfunction and a lack of nutrition and a lack of oxygen, lack of detoxification, which of course leads to more deterioration and degeneration, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more fibro fibrosis, hardening. And thus you have the downward spiral of disease and death that no doctor can do anything about, period. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. By the way, the good news is, is we can do something about it. And that's what we're going to be talking about here in our next segment on The Bright Side. We are back on 
the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. If you have questions about connective tissue, about statin drugs, cholesterol, which we'll be talking about here in a second, um, anything you may have heard about or read about, if you have comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. These are connective tissue building topical products. That is my strategy for formulating anti-aging products. If you're formulating a product, you got to have a strategy. If, you don't, if your strategy is, oh, I just want to make money, or I, my, your strategy is, I just want to have a high profit margin, or your strategy is, I just want to soften the skin, you, you know, that's great. At least have a strategy. At least have something intentional that you're trying to accomplish or trying to uh, do. I don't, think, I don't think that's why, I don't think anybody should purchase a product whose a strategic basis is to make money for somebody. Nonetheless, a strategy is a strategy. You always want to start off anything you're doing with a strategy. My strategy when I formulate skin health products is to build the connective tissue, especially if it's an anti-aging product. What I discovered was healing and anti-aging are both functions of the same thing, building connective tissue. And there's not a lot of ways to do it topically, friends. You don't need a lot of products to do it topically. You only need a couple. That's why I only have four products. If you, if you are just interested in building connective tissue you need, uh, from a topical perspective, you need vitamin C, you need vitamin A, and, and you need a system for delivering them, period. You don't need anything else. Likewise, if you're interested in building connective tissue internally, you don't need anything but the mighty 90 essential nutrients and oxygen. The body can handle everything else. The body can work with everything else. Probably you need calories too. You need food. You certainly, there certainly isn't going to be any drugs that do it. And that's why drugs don't work. That in a nutshell, if you understand connective tissue breakdown as the fundamental basic idea underneath the disease process, you could see why doctors cannot, can do nothing. They're irrelevant in the healing process. No, they're relevant because they can muck things up and they do. And that's why a leading cause of death is your doctor. Nice guy that he may be. And again, I don't want to this shouldn't be about doctors. It's about the model, the medical model. Once we understand the concept that underneath all illness is the same fundamental breakdown, no matter where that illness is occurring, once we get the logic of this, doctoring and drugs will become irrelevant, at least when it comes to chronic degenerative disease. In terms of heroic medicine, stitching you up if you get hit by a, a bus or an infection, you get an infection, okay, that's heroic medicine and there's a place for the medical model there. But in terms of chronic long-term breakdown, that is the end result of largely connective tissue deterioration and then inflammation and then fibrosis and then more deterioration. There's nothing the doctor can do. But of course, there's a bright side. It doesn't matter that your doctors are relevant because while anabolism or building is not in the job description of a doctor, it's not in the job description of medicine, it is in the job description of God of the divine force, of mother nature, whatever you want to call it, of the realm of the cells and the body and biology. Biology is perfect. It has evolved to be perfect. It has thrown out the things that doesn't work and we are the end result. Our biological system is the end result of billions of years of tinkering, of refining, of fine tuning. Your, your body doesn't, your cells don't make cholesterol as a mistake that the doctor has to correct, think about it. Look at what we're saying here, you guys. We're saying that the body has made a mistake, that it's stupid, and that the cholesterol is just there inadvertently and it's forming this, this atherosclerotic plaque or this athero, atheroma, which is the leading cause of death. If you have to boil it down, that's the leading cause of death, is atheroma or atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the foundation of strokes, of heart attacks, of angina, of what's called peripheral uh, arterial disease, of, uh, of, of blood clots, of aneurysms, of uh, dementias, of male sexual problems, ED. Think about all the ways we treat atherosclerosis that we don't even know is atherosclerosis. Think of all the misery that's caused by atherosclerosis, which is cholesterol deposits in the heart that are the end result of weakened connective tissue. But you know what, you guys? 
we can fix this ourselves. We don't need to go to a cardiologist or a doctor, and we don't need a stent or an angioplasty unless it's too late. And yes, I know, sometimes it's too late, and that is true. Okay, more power to the medical model who, if they can fix a system that's been mucked up for, for decades. Okay, I get that. But for the vast majority of us, this is not a doctor issue. It's a, a, a divine issue. The body is brilliant. It knows what it's doing. All we need to do is honor the system with nourishment, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, with oxygen, with a clean place to have the system do its work, a toxin-free place with minimal interaction with poisons, which include drugs. Yes, the drugs we take to fix the body are treated as poisons. And sugar, which after you need, you need a little bit for energy, but after that, that's a toxin. And you can probably throw in industrial toxins too, like heavy metals, like bisphenol, like plastics and pesticides and perfumes and, and preservatives in your skincare products. Yes, preservatives and in your food too as well as fluoride and chlorine, which by the way, chlorine is especially problematic for the heart. And there's some people who believe that that's really one of the major reasons why we have so much heart disease. Everybody blames the diet, but you know what? Chlorinated water kicked in just about the same time as heart disease did. That might be a problem too. I wouldn't be drinking chlorinated water unless you don't have any other options personally. Not a good thing to do. Oh, but it's just a tiny amount of chlorine. I know it's just a tiny amount, but what if you're drinking a gallon a day? What about the water that's sprayed on our crops, our vegetables? What about the water that's, uh, that that's used to reconstitute our orange juice and our soda pop? You know, this stuff adds up. If you're a doctor and you're using a statin drug before vitamin C, what are you thinking? If your doctor has given you a statin drug before he's given you vitamin C, I, he's a bonehead. I don't know how else to say it. That's a, just a boneheaded thing to do. If you use a statin drug before you use vitamin C, that is just boneheadedness, biochemical boneheadedness. If your doctor does not teach you, by the way, doctor means teacher. If your doctor does not teach you about the relationship between connective tissue and cardiovascular health, he's not doing his job. If he's using digoxin, deadly toxin, deadly. Try tripling your dose on digoxin sometime if you're on it. Don't, I'm just kidding, don't. It's nasty, awful, and you'll probably get very sick if not die. If you triple it or quadruple it, that's how potent this stuff is. A beta blocker, a calcium channel blocker. If, you're, if your doctor's using any of these, these nasty, nasty drugs before using nutritional strategies for the heart, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how else to say it. He's a biochemical bonehead, and I don't like saying it, but that's just what it is. Quote me on it. I'd love to talk to a cardiologist sometime on this program. If you know a doctor who, who wants to have a conversation on this program, on the air, please let me know. I would love to do it on the air because I'm tired of just being the only guy saying this thing. I want, somebody to, I want to hear somebody defend the model. I would love to have a doctor come on here and defend the model. Top 10 nutritional strategies for dealing with heart disease or, or non-medical strategies. Number one, activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Use relaxation techniques. Use slow, deep, rhythmic breathing and oxygenation. Eliminate foods that spike your blood sugar and insulin. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. And take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. So hang on. I want to give you, I want to finish up with these top 10, actually there's more than 10 non-medical strategies for dealing with heart disease. If you're dealing with heart disease, which do you know, uh, atherosclerosis, the leading, the leading cause and form of heart disease, that is cholesterol and, and other deposits uh, causing a, a narrowing or a thickening of the vasculature of the heart. It doesn't really occur in animals and the animals that do get it tend to be herbivores, plant eaters. How interesting is that? for veg the vegetarians out there. Cholesterol, you know, wild animals, the lions and tigers that eat uh, carnivores, I should say, that eat lots of cholesterol because they're eating zebras, which are filled with cholesterol, they don't get atheromas, but plant eaters do. Well, what does that tell you? What does that tell you to the next, uh, for the, what does that tell you 
if you're one of the pa uh, one of the many patients out there who thinks that eating cholesterol and eating fat will make you have cholesterol, it's the plants that do it because only herbivores get atheromas. Athero, uh, atherosclerosis, and they do get it, by the way, although not as significant as humans, and the ones that get it the most are the domesticated ones that are eating the same crap as we are. All right, we're going to continue talking about this tomorrow. Let me finish this up real quick, uh, and then we'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. Uh, relaxation techniques, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, oxygenation. These are non-medical strategies for dealing with cardiovascular health challenges and issues which don't just affect the heart, they affect the brain, they affect the muscles, they affect all the organs, they affect everything. Keep your sugar down. Eat only when you need to and eat only what you need to, which you need to feel satisfied. Stop eating when you don't feel satisfied and eat nutrient density. Eat, uh, use nutrient density. Eat nutrient dense. Vegetables are nutrient dense after, after the water's taken out or even including the water. You know, vegetable water is of a different nature than tap water or regular or drinking water. Vegetable water is organized and structured, and that's the way we should be getting our water, by the way, is through the foods we eat, or at least that's how we should be getting our water when we're eating. Of course, you do need water. You need to be drinking water, but th that doesn't take away from the fact that the best water is organized and structured in plants. So anyway, eat nutrient-dense, leverage the power of protein, especially cartilage-containing protein. If you're a vegetarian, you're out of luck. Sorry. But... If you're not a vegetarian, use bone soup. Use my bone broth protein, which you could find on brightsidehealthproducts.com. I'm sorry, brightsidehealth.com. Brightsidehealth.com. Bone broth protein. You can also find our cannabinoids. But you know cannabinoids are also anti-fibrosis and anti-inflammatory. If you're dealing with uh, any fibrotic issues or you want to prevent them, check out our CBD product, our cannabinoid product at brightsidehealth.com. Use arginine. Use taurine. Two extremely important amino acids for the heart. Selenium, zinc, magnesium, calcium, chromium, potassium, all vital minerals for the heart. Vitamin C in the B complex, essential fatty acids, vitamin E, all absolutely critical for the heart. It may very well be that your heart disease is a, a nutritional deficiency if you're missing these things, which most people are. And then there's coenzyme Q10. In fact, we'll talk about coenzyme Q10 tomorrow because that plays a especially important role when it comes to the health of the heart and when it comes to cholesterol and uh, anti-cholesterol therapy. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's say good morning to Diane. Diane in Nebraska is... How you doing, Diane? Long time no talk to. I think you're that Diane, right? Yes, you're correct, Ben. Nice hi, to talk hi. to you again. Nice to talk to you. What's um, going on? Great. I'm interested in uh, liposomal nutrition. I just okay. want your opinion. Your opinion well, tell that. me what you heard about it first, and then I'll tell you my opinion. Um, that it absorbs into the cells without going into the bloodstream. Okay. Is it a product, like a, a manufacturer, like a, a company that's you know that's selling it, or are you just talking about it in general? There's a lot of companies that sell it, I found online, and I just wondered if it's worth it's extra money, of course, if you get it, like the vitamin C is one, it's a real big uh, uh, on the uh, internet, and then they also have glutathione, and yeah. I don't know how many different... <laughs> Here's the problem with liposome. You were sort of right in your description of it. I just wanted to know what they were saying or what you understood. But here's the deal with liposomes. Liposomes are like little bubbles. And they can be loaded with different things. If you load a liposome with something that is ordinarily not easy for the body to handle, it will become easier for the body to handle. It'll trick the body into handling it. So liposomal vitamin C enters into the intestine a little bit more effectively than regular vitamin C, theoretically. However, once it's in the intestine and perhaps even into the blood, I'm not sure if, if it might get into the blood through the intestine a little bit more effectively. However, eventually the vitamin C is going to have to be liberated before it gets, gets into a cell. And it's unlikely unless, uh, and I would have to do some research on it, but I, my hunch is that it's unlikely that you're going to get a significant amount of vitamin C into a cell uh, more effectively than just taking straight vitamin C. I don't know that it's worth the extra price. On the other hand, if you really are interested in liposomes, make your own. You know how you make your own liposomes? I've seen it online. You could do it. That's the fancy way, yes. But I'm saying you don't even have to do that. You can just oh. eat lecithin with your meals. 
Okay. If you just okay. take lecithin granules, your body will make liposomes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, In fact, that's how your body does make, your body makes its own liposomes, by the way, and it does it with lecithin. So you can support that process by using lecithin supplements. And okay. that's what I would do. I do. Yeah, I currently use lecithin supplement, and I don't know how much of it. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. There's no, nobody knows. Just take as much as you want. It's non-toxic. Okay. It's gentle. You know, it's, okay. I, w I would take as much, take if you're doing capsules, take three or four capsules with all your meals. If you're doing granules, mix up the granules. Eggs are a great source of lecithin, by the way, among other things. Eggs are, you know, being the perfect food are a great source of lecithin, too. So is dairy. I don't know if dairy is a great source, but it has some in it. Uh, lecithin is found in what I call the cholesterol complex. The cholesterol complex is a hunk of nutrients. It's a whole bunch of nutrients that are found in organ meats. They're found in dairy. They're found in eggs. They're found in foods that are, have a lot of livingness to them or had a lot of livingness to them because cholesterol, the cholesterol complex, is important for livingness, as we'll talk about tomorrow. And when I say the cholesterol complex, I'm talking about vitamin K. I'm talking about vitamin A. These are very hard to find nutrients, too, by the way. Vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin D, lecithin, and cholesterol. Cholesterol, they all tend to exist together in organ meats and dairy, uh, to a lesser extent in dairy, uh, and also in, uh, in fish and also in, uh, uh, in eggs. And this cholesterol complex is the single, single most vilified food in our food supply. And this is why people don't want to eat their cholesterol complex, and they're staying away from cholesterol complex containing foods. Much to the uh, great misfortune and ultimate, uh, ultimate negative effects to our health. One of the major reasons for our negative and our, our poor, the poor collective state of the health of Americans is the fact that we're not getting enough of these building, moving, dynamic, uh, anabolic, immune, uh, thrival uh, molecules that are found in the cholesterol complex. Vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin D, cholesterol mm -hmm. itself. As well as uh, as well as lecithin. So that's a that's a, a a long story to tell you the answer to your question. I wouldn't waste my money on them, but it wouldn't hurt you to do it. If you really want liposomes, eat your lecithin with your supplements. All right, Diane. Okay. Anything else you want to hold on, or you want to go? Uh, can I hold on, please? Yeah, you can hold. We'll get you. When we, we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back after this. Look. All right, we're back on the bright side. If you want to check out our CBD cannabinoid products, product, go to, uh, go to brightsidehealth.com. If you're dealing with seizure disorders, you need to know about cannabinoids. If you're dealing with pain, you, you need to know about CBD particularly. Uh, and by the way, there's a bunch of good CBD in our in our in Pure Hemp Technologies product, which we're carrying at brightsidehealth.com. It's organic, lots of CBD. And I know the guys that make it. I've actually watched them making it. Um, and we're carrying it at brightsidehealth.com. If you see it on brightsidehealth.com, and I've got four different products on there, or four different lines on there now, uh, I vetted it. I only want stupendously valuable products on brightsidehealth.com. That's my shopping center. And if you have a stupendously valuable product, or you know of a stupendously valuable product, I'd like to hear about it. Send me an email, ben at ksco.com, and maybe we can put it up at brightsidehealth.com. Okay, let's see. We are talking to Diane. Let me find Diane here. Diane, Diane. Okay, let's go to Diane. Diane, uh, real quick, got a bunch of calls I want to get to. What's going on? Sure. I just wanted to mention, Ben, that they uh, say that uh, vitamin C is more absorbable when it's in the liposomal state. Absorbable where? See, ab absorption out of the stomach, absorption out of the from the intestine into the blood, absorption into the cell. I assume the stomach because it says you don't get the diarrhea. As no, that would be the is. intestine. That would be the intestine. Okay. The diarrhea occurs from an intestinal, it, it, from, okay. uh, it has an intestinal, uh, starts off in the intestine. What happens with vitamin C is it pulls water. Vitamin C being water soluble, it attracts water, and uh, that can cause some bloating or discomfort at the intestine level and then into the large intestine if you're not absorbing. So what they're talking about with the liposome is absorption into the blood across the intestinal wall. And that's where most absorption of nutrition takes place, at the intestinal level. So the liposome, I don't know that it would make a big difference. I'd have to read about it because the, the intestine is pretty well equipped to take in vitamin C. 
-huh. So it, um, maybe if you have leaky gut or you have a, some kind of intestinal uh, ulceration or something like that, maybe it'll be compromised. So I'd have to look into that. What's the name of the company? Uh, I haven't looked at any certain one, Then I've just been looking uh, at Let me look into that, Diane. I, I usually am skeptical about those things because in nature, you know, vitamin C comes from fruits. It's not found in liposomes. So I, I'm a little skeptical, but I will look into that, and I'll, and I'll talk about it in the next, on, my next, on the next, if not uh, the next, then a coming Brightside episode. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Have a great okay. day. Good to talk to you. All right, let's move on to Marion in Ohio. Good morning. Welcome to the Brightside, Marion. Hi, this is Marianne, and I really appreciate you taking my call. I sure. sent you an email through okay. your website because what I'm talking about is if you go to YouTube and you Googled body bugs and super scabies, you'll see Super scabies? Fact. Did you say super yes. scabies? That sounds terrible. I know it's horrible. Body bugs and super scabies because you, we've been to three dermatologists. You can't get help. They want to call the psychopath ward and think oh, that yeah. you've got a... Can you see them? Can you see the bites or anything? Uh, on my wife, yes. I, you can't see the bites. You only can see the redness. So okay. we're, we don't know. We've been to the medical doctor. We've had the IV medicine. We've had That's all awful. the treatment. That's awful. We've had That's awful. It's an awful condition. We spent all kinds of money trying to find a solution. So I've gone to your radio because my mother-in-law listens to you all the time, and she says, you need to get on pharmacy band. He's going to know no. to do at least. I know, but I now I have to disappoint you because really that's not a nutritional or degenerative issue. That's a that's an infection. Infections are of a different nature. Be because Go ahead. They say it might be because of fungus related to individuals. No, you fungus. wouldn't have. It could be fungal, but you see, here's the thing about topical conditions. If it's fungal, then you could do something probably. Here's the way you want to work with this. When you have a condition and you're not sure where to go or where to start, you always start at the beginning, and that's the digestive system. That's for several reasons. Number one, that's really how anything gets into the body is through the digestive system. And number two, uh, at the level of the intestines, uh, the level of the intestine, you have your immune system, your body's defense system. So if it is a fungal infection, uh, the body has a defense system that's, that's well equipped to handle fungal infections, but it's housed in the intestine. It's headquartered in the intestine. So you got to work with the digestive system. The way you do it, uh, Marion, is by, uh, by hitting the reset button and fasting. If indeed your problem is, is based in the digestive system, you'll notice some relief when you fast, at least if you fast long enough. Once you fast, How once you break, long enough? it could be, you know, that's a great question. Three days, four Three days, days. It, more than, if you have a serious infection, it would take more than that. But here's the thing. Once you, once you're infected, you got to kill the infection. If the, indeed it, that's what it is. Here's another, another issue. If you have an allergic reaction to something, that can get interpreted as itching. You follow me? And redness for that matter. So it may be that it's not necessarily bugs, but it may be some kind of allergic mediators, and that always involves food as well. So that's for all of those reasons, hitting the reset button with the digestive system is job number one. Okay? Other, and really, you don't have a lot of options here, Marion. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have a lot of options. So we got to do what we can do. We got to do what we can do. If it indeed is a topical infection, you should be able to kill it topically. But if you can't kill it topically, I'm going to guess that you have something going on inside, not topically. And that would start with the digestive system. That is fasting, doing a, uh, a food diary, an elimination diet. Once you start eating again, looking for problem foods. Does, does your wife, how old your wife, first of all? Uh, 59. So like okay, so she's got to have other health challenges. She, she's got to have other things going on. OK, unless she's been, you know, unless she's been paying attention to her body for 59 years and knowing exactly what to do, which is nobody. She's got some other stuff going on. So let's work right. with where we can so work. Can, and can I just go ask ahead. one question? So so you got you got a husband and a wife both with this and simultaneously they've got digestive problems. Oh, heck, yeah. You and okay. you and 100 million other Americans, Marion. What do you think? Right. That one out of three or one out of two even have digestive issues. So there's two okay. of you. Right. That's everybody. This is a this is this is the par for the course in in in, in the United States of America, and probably around the world. Look how we're eating. The GMO corn. It's in everything. Uh, it doesn't help. That, of course, that doesn't help. Corn in general doesn't. Forget GMO. Corn doesn't help. You know what I'm saying? So yes, of course, I'm telling you that simultaneously, coincidentally, you have them. Now, again, I'm not telling you you have a digestive problem and that's what's causing this. 
for it. Okay, and that's not what I'm saying. Right. I'm saying you want to work where you can work. This is called locus of control. All right? You work where you can work. You can't immerse your body in formaldehyde to kill the bugs, right? You can maybe use some, you can use like colloidal silver or Lugol solution, but that probably isn't going to work either. So you work where you can work. The, the benefit of this is you're going to improve your health. Even if you don't improve the itching. Now, I'm thinking it's possible. I don't know this for a fact. I don't, can't see what, I'm, I'm only on the radio here. But it's possible that there could be histamine that's involved. Histamine is an allergic mediator. Histamine is found in foods, and histamine is released when you have allergies, food allergies. Okay? It could have to do with bile. Do you know bile uh, and a, poor, uh, a poorly functioning liver and uh, um, poor, met uh, poor metabolism of bile can cause deposits to occur in the skin? Bile deposits, and bile will cause itching. So there's lots of ways that the digestive system can cause an itching problem. I'm not saying this is a fact, but I'm saying that's w this is where your locus of control is. Of course, getting Thank on a nutritional supplement program is a must. You know, that goes without saying. Particularly essential fatty acids, which are the molecules of inflammation and anti-inflammation. If it indeed is bugs on the surface, Marion, then now you're talking in the world of infection, not degeneration, and that's a whole other bailiwick. And unfortunately, you don't have a lot of options. And I, I wish I could tell you something different. All right. I mean, hold on. At least you didn't tell us it's in our head. I mean, no, it's not. Her. I'm not going to say it's. Yeah. <laughs> they want to put you on antidepressants or something? Prozac? That's what they. Yeah, they said Prozac. They, said you they gave Prozac. Prozac. I don't know. Prozac. I know. That's that's the way it works. All right. I got to okay. go, Mary. God bless you, my well, friend. Good luck with question. everything. Okay. The yes. Liver. So how are you going to boost the liver? So uh, the liver is the liver's a digestive organ. So the first thing is when you work on your digestion. The second thing I didn't tell you this is the liver processes sugar. It's your sugar processing organ. So making sure you're taking control of your sugar. And then the third, th uh, the third element is toxic. The liver is an organ of detoxification. So any toxicity, and that includes sugar, but also uh, toxicity that's coming in from foods, toxicity that's coming in from the digestive system, toxicity from drugs, all of those things. You got to you got to work with that as well. Using vitamin C is wonderful as a detox for the liver. Uh, I, when it comes to detoxing the liver, I go nutritional supplements, vitamin C, vitamin E, essential fatty acids, vitamin B5, and all the B-complex. There's a, a ton of things you could do. Marion, I'm out of time, my friend. God bless you. Good luck with everything. I, I, uh, that sounds like a terrible situation. I'm sorry if I left you on hold. Uh, we'll be back at you on uh, Monday with more good health information on the bright side. Please check out our websites, truthtreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, truth serum, truth balm, truth omega-6 healing cream, also bright side health products, and criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. Join the Bright Side Ben team. Help me and my mission to educate the world about the importance and power of a good nutritional supplement program and start a business as well. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.